So today we are working on organizing my new shop here. So this is a 30 by 50 steel building. We've been working on this project for quite a while now, on and off, just dealing with permits and things like that. And we got the gist of it done a few months ago. We've been working out of here and it's been solid. We've got the building, we've got spray foam, we've got all of the electrical done, we've got air hard lines, we've got a compressor, tire machine, whiffs, we have all the tools, we have all the equipment in here. And again, we've been working out of here, building this car, working on other stuff, and it's been pretty solid, but it has been extremely lacking in one area, and that is organization. You know, we kind of just threw everything in here and got right to work. We had a deadline on this car. Now, fortunately, we've made it through. We got through the first round in it. It performed flawlessly. It doesn't really need much before the next one, aside from some aesthetic stuff. So we've got a little bit of a break to finally tackle these projects that we've been wanting to do in here for a while to make this just a better, more efficient workspace. And again, that those projects are gonna be organization. Right now, everything's mixed with everything. There is no one place for one type of thing. We've got fluids to tools to panel bond to car parts all in one little area right here. So that is what we're gonna try to rectify. So firstly, we have two new toolboxes. So we're kind of changing up the toolbox plan in here. I've had this Milwaukee box for about five or six years now, and we're just to the point where we've outgrown it. I mean, it is packed to the brim with tools. We could cram a little more stuff in here, but not keep it organized. And again, organization is the name of the game here. It is arguably one of the most important things you can do for any workspace. So we've got these two longer toolboxes. So these are obviously long with a workbench top and pegboard. We're gonna have one at each lift station. So that way each lift area has some tools and a place to work on stuff, a workbench to put stuff on when you're taking the car apart, putting it together, etc. Now we also have a big stack of Milwaukee pack out boxes. So we've got everything from two drawer to three drawer, single organizers like this, all the way to crates like this. And the goal is for this setup to be pretty much all of our organization from consumables to uh, parts we use frequently like AN lines and fittings, hardware, things like that. And essentially the old saying of having a place for everything and everything in its place. That is our goal, that is what we're trying to do. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. I think first order of business before we even start cleaning up the mess we've made, the bomb that went off from building this car is to uh, get these toolboxes out, get them set up, and see kind of what they're looking like size-wise so we can see how and where we need to move everything to get them set up where we want them. So enough jibber-jabber, let's get to work. So before we could even start on unboxing these toolboxes, we wanted to get some of this clutter that we've made cleaned up. And the biggest pile of clutter was these tires. We have tires from the last two, three weekends of driving. They add up quick, they stack up fast. So I wanted to get these loaded in the truck, get them ready to take to the dump in the morning, get them out of sight, out of mind, uh, we're going to have another load coming soon that we've got to dismount, so we wanted to get these out of the way, have a fresher, cleaner workspace, and give us some room to breathe and take things apart. So fortunately, these Milwaukee toolboxes come pretty much fully assembled. I've been a big fan of their boxes since I got my first one, just looking at all the other offerings in the price range. In my opinion, they're by far the best bang for the buck. They're just really well built, and they come assembled like nothing seems to come assembled these days, nothing this size. So I was really happy when these showed up and they were pretty well fully assembled. So one thing that I was surprised about is I figured we'd have to bolt this pegboard on, but it actually slides down on this track in the back so you can adjust the height, have it up, have it down. I thought that was pretty nifty. So all we really needed to do to, to finalize and set these up is take the rubber mats out of the package, put them in each drawer. We started with super gluing them in, just because they'll get bunched up over time as you shove tools in there, but it was just gonna take a ton of super glue. So we decided against that and just put them in regular. We'll just have to be careful with it. And uh, that was pretty much it. Put the accessories they include on and we were good to go. Toolboxes are ready. So now we need to make room for the toolboxes. So the first thing to get out of the way is this shelf that we've had. So we got this originally when we were working in the garage during the shop build out and it's moved in here and. It hasn't really found a permanent home yet, and this is where we want to keep one of the toolboxes, so it's got to go, it's got to move somewhere. With it out of the way, we're able to put the toolbox roughly where we want it and see how that's going to feel. You know, it's, it's always a balance of maximizing wall space, but also leaving yourself room to work on the car. You know, both of those things are crucial and they kind of fight each other. So 
Then it was time to move on to the other side of the story, the other wall, and get all this stuff moved out of the way so we could put the shelf over here and the toolbox in its home. So we get the old toolbox moved, get things cleaned up, get the new toolbox in place. We're happy with it. We're able to keep them uniform. We shove the shelf into place and realize it's just kind of an eyesore right in the middle of the work area. So we move all of our pack out stuff from where we had it stored and try to see if we can squeeze this shelf in over here. Now again, this goes back to as you take advantage of wall space, you lose working on the car space. And this is gonna directly impact the room you have around the car to work on it on this lift. But we need the storage, we need the wall space, and we need this to kind of be out of sight, out of mind. It doesn't seem like it's gonna impact it that much. So we decided to go ahead with it, leave it there, see how that goes. So the last thing to move around, it was the old toolbox. Now it's still full of tools, but we wanted to see about where we could put it. So we put it over here on this unused spot by the tire machine. Everything seems like it's gonna work out there. All right, well, it may look like more of a bomb went off than we had before, but we are making progress on the setup. I had just a general idea of where I wanted things to go aside from the toolboxes. These are the only things that I was confident in where I wanted to put them, which is why I went with these two boxes. And again, the reason for this is so if you're working on the car, whether you're over here working on a car, or if you're over here working on a car, you have a worktop. I would say, at least for me, having worktop, workbench space to utilize during a project is probably the most important thing to have in a shop. And it's something I can never get enough of. No matter how many workbenches I have, I always need more. And I do keeping them clean and free of clutter, but you just, it's just, it's nice to have a flat worktop to be able to take something apart on, keep things organized. If you need to weave a project halfway done here and do something else, you can do it on another one. So that's why I did this, this kind of idea was because I wanted to make sure that each work area had a worktop. That's huge. So those nailed down. That's good. Those are saying this is where they're going to be. We're good with that. Uh, I think we're committed to keeping this shelf back here. I don't love it just because it is gonna be tight if you're working on this back corner of a car on this lift. However, it's really the best place to put it to keep it out of the way, kind of out of sight, out of mind. This will kind of transition into being uh, just big bulky storage is what's gonna go on here. What we had on here was a bunch of totes of small parts, but the idea is to transition those into the pack out boxes. So it, it at least makes use of that wall space. That's something that in this kind of shop layout you run out of really quick is wall space. We have a bunch of floor space, but we're very limited on wall space. So now my next task, what I want to work on is figuring out what tools to put in which box. My original intent with this setup was to have this as my more long-term project, my main project work area, and this is like temporary work area. So for example, this car is in here. We finished the comp round with it. It's still good. It's still running and driving. We don't have much to do to it. We just, you know, maybe you need to get up in the lift, nut and bolt check it, do a fluid change, things like that quick in and out projects. That was the idea here. However, in practice, it just hasn't really worked out that way. This is really turned into storage. This is more of the main work area. If we're going to work on a car, this is generally where we do it. So because of that, this is going to be kind of the main toolbox with the most tools for working on a car. And this is going to be more of the other stuff. So again, it's really tough to categorize those two. <laughs> And I'm probably gonna spend quite a bit of time trying to deliberate and decide on where to put these things, but we're gonna just go at it.
With the toolbox organized and a layout that I was happy with and relatively committed to, I decided to go ahead and label it using this label printer I had got for wiring projects. So that way, you know, while we're learning the new layout, we can find stuff and if anyone else needs to grab something, it makes it easier if there's some labels there. So with that done, we played some more shuffling, moved some stuff around, made some room, some open space to unbox all of our pack out boxes, get them all organized by size and shape and type, and that way we could get a visual of what we're working with and start coming up with a game plan of how and where we wanted to mount them. All right, we got everything unboxed. We've got the wall plate set up over there, which we'll get into in a minute. I'm still not 100% sure where we want to put that. I, this takes priority since this is going to be most of our storage. Got all this stuff out, got it organized by what it is. So we've got two drawers, three drawers, we've got baskets, we've got deep organizers, We've got shallow organizers. We've got half organizers. We have a little bit of everything, and as well as the track kits to mount it. So this stuff's really cool. It's commonly used for people taking their tools to a job site, but I got one of these three drawers and had used it in the old shop, and I loved it. It, it fits way more than you would think, very versatile. So let me show you how this works, if you don't know. So we've got a little lever here. So we'll put this on, latches in. They're connected, you want to take it off. Boom. So my plan is to basically come up with a stack amount and mount them to the wall. So ideally we'll have something like a two drawer and then a three drawer and then maybe an organizer on top with stuff that you'd want to take with you to go work on a car with, you know, like maybe consumables for a grinder or something like that. Um, so yeah, this is going to be all our storage. The nice thing about doing it this way is we can add on to it at any time. We can change it up at any time. Um, and that's why we got the combination of deep and short. We should be able to fit just about everything that we have scattered all about in these. We just got to figure out where we want to mount them in the combination. So <sighs> enough to retire. Let's get back to work. So this being one of those projects that you really don't know how everything's going to lay out until you start doing it, we just kind of dove in and started trying some different things to see what we were going to like, what was going to work, and what wasn't. So we made our mount, our wall mount for our track, and this is where our shelves are going to clip onto, and that's what's going to hold our pack out boxes. So we got that mounted to the wall, we got the shelves on, and we started packing them on there and seeing kind of what layout we wanted. Now. The problem was this board was a little too flimsy for what we wanted to do. We couldn't stack as many as we wanted. So we started playing with different layouts to see what was gonna work. And we came up with this layout that we really liked with the drawer systems on the bottom, with the totes, and then the three drawers on top with organizers. The only thing we didn't like about this layout was that the bottom ones were just sitting on the floor. It just felt unfinished. So we revised our game plan. We went and grabbed some solid heavy duty two by sixes that Raldo and Josue had lying around and started building our next track system on those. So we started mounting our track. We've got to basically cut this in half and then cut the center out of it to make them uniform. And that allows us to take two tracks and essentially turn them into four since the way we're mounting them, we don't really have the height to use all of the track. So we start getting those screwed onto the heavier board as kind of a proof of concept to see if this is gonna work any better. Since our original design was a little bit too floppy and then we go ahead and cut the end off and it's ready to mount on the wall. But first, a quick shameless merch plug. Jibber Jabber and Garage Bill Tees. Got pockets, super nifty. GarageBillCo.com if you're interested. All right. So our plan is the same here as far as the height and mounting them. We've got to basically offset them to the right away from the toolbox because where the toolbox lands with the electrical box, it kind of covers this beam. So that's probably the most challenging aspect here is we've got to have it hanging past the one beam and offset from the other beam. So it's a little bit tricky, but we get it on there and it works out pretty much like we had hoped. 
everything blends out like it should, and it is much, much sturdier than before. We could stack two of the drawer systems probably uh, if we wanted to, but we decided against it because part of our change of plans was to use the original boards that we had for this top shelf and relocate them to the bottom so that we can mount those bottom systems onto the wall and have them fixed. It's just one of those things. Like I said, it just feels unfinished otherwise. So I go ahead and cut the ends of the track off. You know, as I said, this is kind of all a proof of concept. So we wanted to get it done first before we kind of finished it up and did the, the details, the finer details. So we took the first board, mounted it all the way at the bottom of the wall, and then went ahead and cut a lot more track because now we've got to make essentially two more full boards now that we've changed our game plan over. We thought we were going to get away with just using the two, but we're going to need all of the track we got. Luckily, we got enough. So we go through, cut all of those down, get them ready to go. And once they're all mounted to all the boards, we go ahead and just cut all of the ends off. We now know this plan's going to work. The setup's going to do what we want it to do. So we final cut them. And then it's just install time. So now we go over the other wall, get the bottom plate installed there. This one's obviously much easier because we just mount it flush with the floor. If we were to bring it off the floor, then it would start to get too close to the organizers above and then you would have a problem. It would basically be useless. So we didn't want to relocate the above storage up too high to where you can't get into the drawers, but we didn't want those to have to be all the way down on the ground. So it was a balancing act. We're trying to retain this original mounting spot since we've already mounted stuff there and work around it with these bottom ones. So we've now got our system fully mounted to the far wall. We are getting all of the organizers on it and it's panning out just like we had hoped. So we move back to the original wall. We've got to remount this top piece since we changed up the board and went with the thicker board on the top since it's obviously going to be higher up and under a bit more load. Got it drilled and mounted and screwed in and then we could put the organizers on here. It is very satisfying. These are so versatile and they go on so quickly. And one of the beauties of this is if we find ourselves using something in one more than the other, we can just move it to a better location. Very, very handy. All right, we got all of our pack out stuff up. I am really, really pleased with how this turned out. This is pretty much exactly how I envisioned it. I'm glad we were able to find the wall space and kind of the plan to map it out. Uh, it looks good having it all symmetrical, same toolbox, same pack out boxes on both sides. Super convenient, you gotta get something out of here and pull it out if you want to. Uh, overall, really, really pleased with that. So we, have, we didn't get the wall plate set up up, so basically, just to show you what this is, it's kind of, instead of mounting it down, it mounts on the wall like that. And then you have different attachments like this that clip into it on the wall. So this, for example, is to hold, you know, two impacts, drills, things like that. They've got like drawers and shelves. So this is gonna be really cool. I just, I'm not 100% on where I wanna put it yet. I'm thinking probably right around on this wall because I intend to put a couch here, mini fridge here in the motion simulator set up here. But I, I really don't know. You know, you really gotta get stuff in and kind of move it around. So I don't wanna commit to where we're putting that yet until I know how everything else shakes out. But obviously at least we got this sorted. We started to organize the wiring stuff into them but we realized if we did it that way, we weren't gonna leave ourselves a lot of room in them to expand and put other stuff in there. You know, if we decide, oh, let's make this one for battery chargers. So we're gonna kind of sleep on it. This is gonna be kind of a long process, I think, to get these fully organized and we need to leave ourselves room to expand later on. I mean, I intend on having at least two of the drawer systems as just junk, as in just stuff that doesn't really have a, a category or a place but needs to go somewhere. That's key, if you ever get new storage, whether it's a new toolbox or stuff like this, don't try to fill it up. Your instinct is always like, I wanna fill it up, it's empty. You know, it feels empty if you go from a small toolbox to a big one, but you will eventually. And then you'll be sad that you filled it up with junk when you don't have any room to put new stuff in it. So. That's kind of what we're gonna do here. I gotta think on it and see. I mean, a lot of that stuff is gonna condense into here, but just try to figure out what goes where. Now, the cool thing is, since these are modular, like let's say we have a bunch of stuff we use all the time in here, we can just take this one out, move it, and put it right here, right next to the toolbox. So anyway, I'm jibber jabbering on. I'm glad we got that done. I've had those sitting in the corner and we just haven't had time. We've been so busy working on the car. And as you can see, stuff's everywhere as it is right now. So I'm excited to get this place cleaned up and hopefully have everything in its place. That's the goal at least, so. 
Anyway, I'm gonna I said I quit Jibber Jabber and thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.